Hey, this is Robert Monroe, and I am here with another video in my niche, my favorite thing to talk about, which is how to's practical advice for the intermediate level musician. This video is going to be about seeing what do we use our site for? What should we be looking at? Should we be looking at our hands? Should we be looking at the music? Should we be looking at something else? We're about to get into it, but first let's start out with what role does site really play in music making? Now, you might be willing and ready to go straight to, well, why are we talking about site? Ears is the most important sense. But if you actually think about modern life, sight is by far and away our most used sense if you are blessed to be able to see. We use sight for almost everything, for driving, for looking at our phone screens, for looking at our computer screens, for looking at TV, for reading books, for checking out the facial expressions of the people around us. We use sight all the time, and in music, it's no different. We use sight to see the music we're reading, to check our technique, to communicate with others. It is super powerful. It's one of the most powerful tools that we have in our arsenal to use. With that being said, it can cause some serious problems, and we almost become a cripple when we use our sight too much. It almost lacks like crutches for a healthy person. If you got a broken leg, use the crutches. But if you don't have a broken leg, your legs will actually weaken the more you use crutches and our eyes kind of do the same thing. Let's get into the three places you should use your eyes, which is on the music in front of you, on the instrument, which in this case we're talking mostly about piano, but to be honest, this could be applied for guitar, this could be applied for horn, anything else. And then the last is somewhere else, and I'm going to be vague for that, but we'll, we'll define it later. Don't worry about it. Let's go in order. What are the pros of looking at the music? Well, that should be pretty obvious. We can get the information necessary to play the piece. If you want to be an excellent sight reader, you need to work on looking only at the music and never looking at your hands. And you might be going, but there's a big jump in this piece. Oh, there's a hard technical passage. Which finger should I use? How do I navigate the black keys? Well, here's the deal. There are incredible blind musicians that have never seen a piano in their entire life and yet still cannot play you. You do not need your eyes to play the piano. You have two other senses to help you with that. You have your ears to confirm whether you're playing the right notes and you have touch to help feel out where you're at. As you get more comfortable, you'll get to the point where you don't really even need touch and hearing. You're just going to go right to the right place and then go from there. That is why I think everyone at that intermediate level really should be probably spending more time than any other place to be looking straight at the music. You're going to become an expert sight reader and your actual technique is going to increase, not decrease, as you trust your hands to do their job and allow your senses to all have their own role. My eyes can look at the music. My ears can hear the music and decide whether I am playing the right things. In my hands, I fully trust them to feel the piano and know where I'm at. Let's get into, though, the downsides of only looking at the music. Well, what if you're playing in a band situation? Now you're just looking at the music. You're not communicating with anybody else. You're kind of isolated and you're paying attention only to this one thing. That's a real problem. What if there are really technical passages? I know I said that you don't need to look at your hands, but it certainly can help. And I've had many teachers and mentors talk about the benefits of looking at your hands during technical passages. And I have to say, I'm pretty won over by the idea that that's a great way at least to practice. You might not want to rely on it during a performance, but at least to practice, it is a good idea to be able to look at your hands. So that kind of transitions us naturally to the second one, which is looking at our hands. What benefits, what pros do we get from looking at our hands? Well, the first is it's going to emphasize memorization because we should not be looking at the music at that point. You really have to choose. If you get one thing out of this video, it should be you have to choose where your eye focus is. If you are just letting yourself intuitively look where you want to look, it's going to be a mess and you're going to play stuttery and it's going to be awful. You need to either look at the music or look at your hands, not both. But let's say you decide to look at your hands. You're going to have 
the song memorized, which is great. You're going to be working on that. You're going to have it to emphasize technique, which is awesome. You're also going to be able to feel your instrument more. Now, that sounds kind of weird, but in reality, it's almost the same thing as watching your muscle contract in the gym mirror. You're allowing yourself to build a better mind-muscle connection, and that is really powerful. What are some cons and, and negatives of just looking at your hands? Well, the first is you're not going to be looking at the music. And especially I have younger students where they seriously will be looking at their hands and playing wrong notes. And I'm like, hey, what note is that? And they'll still be staring at their hand and be like, uh, A. And I'm like, uh, it's actually an F sharp. Maybe uh, look at the music because that's where the notes are. That's a huge one. Another big problem is it can be, like I mentioned earlier, a crutch. It can literally be this lifesaver, this life preserver that keeps you on track. But if you really have some seriously hard technical passages, you might need to just rip that Band-Aid off, make a ton of mistakes by just closing your eyes entirely and just completely depriving yourself of that super sense of seeing and allow your ears and your kinesthetics and your feel to catch up with what your eyeballs are able to help you with. I want to get into the third final place you can look, which is somewhere else. And I want to get into some specific use cases for the somewhere else. The somewhere else could be looking at other bandmates. This is huge if you are live performing. If you are not actively looking at the people you are playing music with, you are doing music wrong. And if you can't do that because you need to look at the music or you need to look at your hands, you need to get better at your instrument. You need to spend more time practicing what you are playing with other people at home so when you are rehearsing and when you are performing live, you can look them dead in the eye. It may be uncomfortable, too bad. Make your bandmates uncomfortable. You're gonna benefit from it, they're gonna benefit from it, and you're gonna have so much more fun. Second place you could look, you could look at the audience. This is another huge, huge benefit. If you are performing music live and you have not ever experienced the pure joy it is to make eye contact with a stranger and share this musical moment with them, you are super missing out. It is a hugely fundamental thing and makes a huge difference. Then I'd say the third kind of most important place to be able to look is nowhere. And this sounds really kind of odd and bizarre. But there is a certain in the zone element to performing and to playing music. And it kind of helps sometimes to be able to transcend where you're currently sitting and allow your mind to wander and enjoy this beauty that's unfolding. A lot of musicians describe playing at their best as almost an outer body experience where they're watching themselves play the piano or play their instrument. I highly encourage you really do need this ability of being able to just not look at anything in particular. Maybe you're staring at the strings in the piano. Maybe you're looking up at the ceiling. It's almost like you're detaching from your current reality and it's a very powerful experience. The very, very final thing is allowing yourself to be at such a level that you can use your eyes to problem solve as you're actively playing. This may be a niche point, but it is super helpful, especially if you're interested in becoming a music director, to be able to, you know, for example, see that the sound guy is struggling with something and be able to address a technical problem or send a quick text on your phone. Again, very niche, but very powerful if you can do this. We have been talking about where you should be looking with your eyes. And this is such an important point. If you have not brought your attention to this, please do so. This will greatly affect your playing in many ways. Let's just do a quick review as to where I think you should be looking depending on what you are doing. If you are learning music, keep your eyes on the sheet of paper in front of you. That is the most important place for your eyes to be at that point. If you know the song pretty well, turn your focus to your hands. Double check technical patterns. Double check how it feels. Check how good your memory is by not looking at the music. 
after that becomes comfortable and you're going into performance, particularly rehearsals, you should be looking at bandmates. And then finally, when you are in the final performance, you should be able to look at the audience, to look at nothing, to just be able to troubleshoot and be able to completely use your eyes for other things than playing the music. This has been Robert Monroe. We've been enjoying going through these very specific topics. If you have another thing that you're curious about, go ahead and fire it away. I'd love to cover it. And until next time, you have a great day.